Now, when you look at Chinese medicine or acupuncture from the Eastern side, or how it's actually thought of in its own culture and where it comes from, practitioners often talk about qi, quote, energy, and blood. Those are two really important concepts. But from the Western side, when we talk about biomedical research done on acupuncture, what is acupuncture really doing? And what is it really doing even in like a general philosophical or a very, very, very general medical sense? In this video, I'm going to share a little bit about what acupuncture does, both at the high level, the 10,000 foot view, as well as the practical view. Hey, I'm Alex Hine, author of the book Master of the Day and current doctoral student in traditional or classical Chinese medicine. Now I've included there, the first link in the description is a free infographic on five practices you can do daily to add 10 years to your life with classical Chinese medicine. So you can check it out right there in the description box below. So from the biomedical point of view, typically acupuncture has been shown to work in a few key ways. The first is that Studies have shown that acupuncture may alter brain chemistry by changing the release of neurotransmitters and neurohormones. So it affects part of the central nervous system related to sensation as well as involuntary bodily functions, such as immune system function and reactions, processes that regulate a person's blood pressure, blood flow, and temperature. So we tend to see nervous system effects, endorphin effects, immune system effects, now the second category, broad category, is that acupuncture really does affect the autonomic nervous system effectively. So the autonomic nervous system typically governs the things we think we can't control consciously. So for example, research has been done that shows that acupuncture can affect smooth muscle functioning, sleep quality, urinary incontinence, sweating rate, the rate of the transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxations, which is key for acid reflux and nausea and vomiting. So it affects a lot of these processes that are, one of the things that we think of is why they're so important is because acupuncture is one of the best ways to activate more of that parasympathetic reflex. So acupuncture not only can help, can control or affect the autonomic nervous system, the thing that we can't control, but also for modern people that are super stressed, it really is one of the best ways of flipping on the parasympathetic just the rest and digest switches in the body. Now from the Chinese medicine point of view, what are we really doing? Right, we talked about qi, which is quote unquote energy. I use that word very loosely. And then blood. So the high level of Chinese medicine is that everything is about flow. Where there's pain, there's a saying, there's no flow. And where there's flow, there's no pain. But how does that deal with things like SIBO, bloating, gut dysbiosis? headaches, or menstrual complaints. So with gut dys dysbiosis, for example, like so many patients now complain of SIBO, which is bloating, uh, burping, acid reflux, what a few decades ago was called candida. This is a really big epidemic in modern times. For Chinese medicine, one of the reasons why that occurs, there's many, one of them is what's called cold. So because it's actually cold in the lower part of the body in the digest digestive system, we want to warm that up. So we use herbs and formulas that actually stimulate, for example, hydrochloric acid production. We use warming formulas. We also use herbs that biomedically, I'm sure, have been shown to reduce biofilms and clear them out. That's one of the ways that we help the flow happen, the flow of qi and blood. Now, for a headache, the same thing could be true. The headache in Chinese medicine can come from many, many, many different sources. But at the end of the day, if there's flow, there's probably not going to be a headache or the headaches will be really reduced. And with something like infertility that we end up treating a lot, infertility, the most common pattern we see is what's called like a cold in the uterus pattern, where uh, the woman may be prone to having like physically being cold, but may also have like brittle nails, dry or thinning hair, falling out hair, thyroid issues, maybe he's gaining weight, uh, dry lips, dry skin, fatigue, sleep issues, memory issues. Like this pattern can all be related to cold on one level. And so the lack of flow in that case 
is due to the cold and the constriction. So the formulas we give are related to warming and moving, and the acupuncture is generally designed to do the same thing. Warm, move, and circulate. So that's a little bit of a glance, east versus west kind of correspondences of what acupuncture specifically does. But the whole theory behind Chinese medicine is that no matter what modality you use, acupuncture, formulas, moxa, massage, whatever, they should all move the body in the same direction. So the, the quote-unquote flow of energy is the most important thing to get right first. That's like a, an adage that we learn before anything, before any treatment or medicine is administered. So, at the end of the day, what does acupuncture do? It helps restore the natural flow. It's the traffic conductor in the body, as one of my mentors said. It's saying, everything's shunting this way in the body, but we need to make it go that way now. To make even things out, balance them out, and make this pathological process resolve itself. Now, of course, if you want to stay in touch, the best way is to download that free guide in the description, 5 Daily Habits to Add 10 Years to Your Life with Classical Chinese Medicine. That'll give you a few things to work on if you're more interested. Again, that's right there in the description. You can also check out my last two videos right there and right there.